So we'll start with our usual warm up and then I'll figure out what else we're going to do. So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead. Sitting bones down, hips open, shoulders relaxing down, crown reaching to the ceiling. And just take a moment there, breathing, getting into your yoga frame of reference. Remember, core active, so ribs in and up, getting that core supporting your spine. And crown reaching to the ceiling so your spine gets nice and open. Breathing deep, focusing inward. And then inhaling, arms are reaching out at shoulder level. Exhale, hands to your chest. Stretch them forward, keeping your shoulders down. And then hands behind you, fingertips clasp. Lift your heart and pivot at your hips coming over into your forward bend. So hands coming up, head coming down, kind of move your head around for your neck. And then relax. Knees bent maybe a little bit or straighten them if you like that stretch on the back. And then bending your knees, chin tucked in, lift your ribs as you drop your sitting bones and wind your way up into the back bend. So upper body lifting as you stretch your head back and pull your shoulders down. So just take a few breaths there and that upper body back bend. And then inhale upright and release your arms. So take a moment to feel your spine getting a little bit warmer. And again, inhale or reach out. Exhale to your chest. Stretch to the front, shoulders down, and clasp your hands behind the opposite way. Chest stretching toward the ceiling as your head stretches back. And then exhale over. Come into your forward bend again, only as deep as you want to go. You can pull your ribs toward your thighs and your hands toward your toes if you want to. Or you can just be gentle. And then again, when you're ready to come up, just unwind slowly, feeling your bones move into place and into that upper body back bend as you pull your shoulders down. Lengthen your spine, keep breathing. And then inhale up and release. And take a moment there, feeling how your spine is working, how your energy is moving. And we'll do our side stretch next. So arms go out, palms toward the ceiling, arms over your shoulders, <clears throat> pass your hands and clasp them, and then pull the arms by your ears. Sitting by the down, shoulder blades down, body facing the front. Center, switch the other hand in front, and again, pull the arms back by your ear. Stretch up, straight, and pivot to the side without twisting. And again, the foot, you're leaning away from the down for a little extra stretch, and out through the top. And again, inhale back to the center, and release back to mountain. Take a moment feeling your ribs, your side, your whole body. And then arms are reaching at shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, arms above your shoulders, cross your elbows for the twist. So sitting on the down, base of the skull, crown high. Stretch your spine apart, breathe in, and exhale either way for a twist. Keep a little bend if you want. Stretch up as you breathe in. And stay in a twist as you exhale and come over into your forward bend. So just deepen into that as much or as little as you want. Kind of make sure that you're rotating your thighs inward so your whole leg stays straight. And ankle and toes. And then inhaling, work your way back up while you're twisted in the upper body and lift your heart. Pull your elbows back, and again, upper body for your back bend, not overstraining your lower back. And then inhale upright, exhale to the center, switch your arms around, pull your shoulders back down. 
And again, lengthen your spine, exhale to the other side. Take a breath. And exhale over. Again, keep everything aligned in your legs as you come into that upper body twisted forward bend. So just deepen as much toward your leg as you'd like and relax. Knees can be straight or slightly bent, your choice. And when you're ready to release, inhale your way up, staying in the twist, and lift your heart. Pull your elbows back, and work your upper body into the back bend, not your lower back. Shoulder blades toward your waist. And inhale to the top, exhale to the center. Arms up, keep them parallel, shoulders and shoulder blades down. We're going to pivot at the hips and keep your back as straight as you can with your arms next to your ears as you can, coming parallel to the floor if you can. And then just drop into ragdoll and hang. So arms wherever they come, lift your sitting bones a little bit, get that back of the leg a little more stretched if you like it. You can pull in and get that lower back stretched more if you want to, hands behind your legs or ankles. And then release your hands back to the front. Slide them up onto your shins right below your knees. Elbows straight, knees straight, back straight. Get everything in that halfway up lengthening. And then again, drop into ragdoll. And one more time, that slowly winding back up, letting the spine articulate back into mountain pose. Take a moment there. Let your body sink into your feet evenly. We'll do a little practice balance. If you want your chair, you can have a chair next to you. So chairs are optional. They sometimes help you to have a little bit more confidence if you've challenged with your balance. Side of the foot, parallel to your chair or the mat. Hand on your chair or not, your choice. Lift your toes, get the base of the toes connected. Spread your toes back on the mat. Get the heel and the front of your foot evenly sinking in. So that arch keeps lifting so the whole outside of your foot is down. Really connect. Knee and toes are going the same direction. So that slight inner rotation at the top of your thigh to keep the bones stacked for support. And your shoulder right over your hip. And then we're just going to lift the other foot a little or more or toward your heart. So your choice how high you bring that leg in, and then we're gonna work the ankle. So if you're on a cushiony surface, you may wanna be holding onto the chair, that's perfectly good. Or you might wanna have your foot closer to the floor, but even if it's down, you can still circle your ankle because we wanna keep those ankles flexible, and we don't use them very often that way. And then point and flex a few times before you release your foot back to the floor. And switch your chair to the other side if you're using your chair. So again, foot parallel to either the end of the mat or the chair, so that you're inner rotating, keeping the knee right above the ankle, pointing toward that second toe, getting the whole base of your toes connected first. No gripping with the toes, that raises the base, it gives you less support. So get that whole bottom of your foot evenly grounded, Shoulder right above your hip, crown reaching to the ceiling, nice strong spine lengthening up. And again, the other foot comes up a little or more or pull it in. So do what's right for your body. Work your ankle both ways, circling it around, getting that circulation going. And a few point and flexes before you release. Feel that connection down to the earth, back in mountain pose. And let's use the chair for a minute. So if you've got a chair, if you don't, you can use the wall. So if you do use the chair, face the chair, put your hands on the back and take a giant step back so that you can get your body parallel to the floor and sink your chest down toward the floor. So heart area going down. If you're at the wall, the hands come right in front of your shoulders, and then maybe a little bit up, and again, a big step back. Push your sitting bones 
right over your ankles and drop your chest toward the floor. So an upper body coming into a nice upper body back then so that if you've been driving your car a lot or sitting at your sewing machine a lot or at your computer or whatever you're doing with that forward bendy stuff, this is kind of a counteracting motion that gets that upper body into a little for today and that upper body letting go. And crown reaching either toward the chin. And tuck in your chin, bend your knees, and just walk toward the wall or the chair and back into your mountain pose. So, done with the chair, just put it away if you've been using it. So again, mountain pose, just feeling that upper body a little bit more stretched and energized. And we're going to stretch up, pivot over, and come all the way down to the mat into child's pose. So hips back on your heels as much as they'll go, pad if you need to, hands, palms up, forehead coming toward the floor, or all the way down, your choice. Knees together for that low back stretch or knees separated if you need to breathe a little bit more effectively. And relax. Now I've got a little ant on my mat. Uh-oh. I hope that doesn't mean I've got an ant infestation. So go ahead and relax in your spine stretch, counteracting that back bend we just did. And then inhale and sit up and bring your hands to the mat and your knees under your hips and allow your wrists, elbows, and shoulders to line up. So spread your fingers, come up onto your fingertips, press the knuckle down and the base of the fingers down and the heel of the palm down and try to miss the ant. Okay, so your elbows are straight, kind of the elbows go toward the sides of the mat so that things are aligned through your wrists elbows and shoulders. Knees are under your hips, pad under them if you need to. And remember, if at any time your wrists get too strained, you can circle them or you can put padding under the heel of your palm so that it's not such a bend to your wrist. So we're just gonna start with a little cat work. So focus in that upper back area and bring your chest down toward the floor as you lift your sitting bones. And Rotate your face forward, crown toward the ceiling. So feel those shoulder blades sink down toward the floor. And then lift your shoulder blades, tuck your sitting bones down, tuck your chin in, top of the head toward the floor, coming into angry cat in the upper back, arching up into that forward bend. And then inhale and come back to neutral. So those ribs are up supporting your low back, and the chest is coming down, not hunching up through that upper back. So lengthen sitting bones back, crown forward. And then just look over one shoulder, get the stretch through the sides, lateral motion to your spine. Inhale back to the center. Exhale to the other side. And let's get rid of the ants. Go away, ants. I don't want to kill you, just I want you out of my way. And then we're going to slide one hand forward and bring the elbow down under your shoulder. In fact, push both the hands forward, elbows right under your shoulder. And then let's pivot one hand behind the elbow and sink your hips back toward your heel and slide the forward hand more forward so you're really stretching through that armpit upper shoulder area. And then bring your forehead to your hand or further down toward the mat if you like extra stretch. Or you can push your chin forward if that's a little bit more operative. So the hips keep sinking back. That hand in front is planted and the shoulder is opening down toward the floor. So don't overstrain it. Don't really extremize whatever you're doing. Just let that shoulder just naturally sink Toward your, hand, <clears throat> toward your hand on the floor. 
And then lifting your head, slide that hand back and pivot the other one out. So both hands, again, are straight ahead and your elbows are under your shoulders. And of course, we're going to balance the body and do that to the opposite side. So pivot the other hand behind your elbow. Slide that hand forward. Plant the palm. So again, you can come up on your fingertips, get that whole hand planted. Sink your hips back more as you bring that shoulder armpit area down. And you can forehead to the arm or further toward the floor or slide your chin forward, whichever is more comfortable for you as you let that upper arm and shoulder sink toward the floor. So maximize for your body or minimize. Remember, it's a personal practice. Do what's right for your body. And then rotate your face to the front. Slide your hand or hand back, elbow under your shoulder. And allow both hands to be to the front. And then we're going to go into wisdom pose. So slide both hands forward. Drop your chest armpits toward the floor and bring your forehead to the mat. So just focusing there on letting that upper body, chest area, armpit area, shoulder area come down toward the floor on both sides. So breathe, just relaxing. And then tuck in your chin, slide your hands back under your shoulders and come back into table position. So again, get your back as flat and parallel to the floor as you can. So elbows are straight, hips are under your knees, and wrists, elbows, and shoulders are lined up. And we're going to do a little balance practice again. So lift those ribs up toward your spine for good support. Slide your right foot back, bring it up to hip level, and extend out through the base of your toes. So the hip is rotated toward the floor, not out to the side. And then your opposite arm comes out next to your ear, shoulder level in front. And just extend through the foot behind you, through the hand in front of you, as your spine stays nice and straight and your back parallel to the floor. And then bring your hand down and your knee back into place and resituate. So again, you can pad under your knees, you can circle your wrists if you need to as we get ready for that opposite side. So foot goes back up to hip level, extend out through those base of your toes and raise your opposite arm near your ear, extending out to the front. The ribs are up supporting that low back. The whole spine is straight and stretching open. Your fingers and your toes are reaching away from each other maybe a little bit more. Don't forget to breathe. And then hand comes down and the knee comes back into place. Take a moment feeling your spine a little bit more energized. And no, we're not going to do both feet and hands together. That doesn't work in this particular pose. So take a moment just breathing as you get back into your table position. And then we're going to move the hands to the sides of the mat. Pivot your hips down and roll your whole spine in a nice little back bend all the way to the mat. Forehead to the floor, hands at your side, or you can turn your head to the side, resting crocodile for just a moment. But be sure if you do that, that you turn your head on an exhalation to the opposite side so your neck stretches evenly on both sides. Then we're gonna bring the hands way out overhead along the floor, right in front of your shoulder. So palms toward the floor, fingers spreading out, lower body relaxing down, so hips parallel and sinking into the mat, feet straight back from your hips. Lower body does nothing, this is a cobra variation. So bring your fingertips where the heel of your palm is, bend your elbows out to the sides, palms on the floor right in front of your shoulders, and forehead on the mat. And then we're going to inhale, face forward, crown to the ceiling. Tuck your chin back toward your chest slightly. And then chest forward and up. And not pressure in your hands, really let your spine do the work coming into this upper body back bend. So only as high as you want to go. You can keep your ribs on the floor. They don't ever have to get up in cobra. 
So again, no pressure in your arms. You could actually move them if you want to. And then exhaling, bring your forehead back to the mat. Take a moment and breathe. And then again, fingertips where your heel of your palm was, hands closer to your body, elbows bending further to the sides, hands right in front of your shoulders. Forehead on the floor to start with, relax through the hips, through the legs, nothing happens in your lower body. Inhale, face forward, crown towards the ceiling. Tuck your chin back toward your chest a little bit so that that upper neck area doesn't crunch. And then chest forward and up maybe a little bit more using your spine to come further into that upper body back bend. <laughs> right about above the shoulder blades, right about the shoulder blady area, depending on how far you've moved your hands. So just take a moment there, maximizing chest forward and up. If you love it, you can stay in this back bend for a few breaths. If you don't, you can exhale and bring your forehead back down to the floor whenever you need to. I happen to like back bends. Maybe you don't. It's your choice. Anyway, lengthen through your spine. Keep breathing chest forward and up, chin a little bit in. And when you're ready to release, go ahead and exhale forehead down to the mat. Take a moment there, feeling that circulation through that shoulder blade upper back area. And then again, fingers in, palms coming back, another hand print, elbows out to the side. So forehead once more on the floor, hips relaxing, feet down into the mat, doing nothing. Inhale, face forward, crown to the ceiling. Tuck that chin back towards your chest a little bit, shoulder blades towards your waist. And chest forward and up, again, using your spine to come further into that upper body back bend, kind of at the level of your shoulder blade this time, perhaps. So just kind of notice where that main contraction is in your spine and allow your awareness to bring that point forward and up maybe a little bit more. So keep breathing, keep relaxing, and remember, not a lot of pressure in those hands. It's your spine we want doing the work. And when you're ready to release, exhale and come back down. Forehead to the mat. So this one's a yogini choice. You can choose where on your spine you want the contraction to be. So if you liked that shoulder blade area, leave your hands there. If you liked it a little higher, bring it out. If you liked it way up at that neck and shoulder, bring it even further out. Keep your hands wherever they are, right in front of your shoulders, elbows bending out to the side. So pick your place. If you get the wrong place, just go back down, forehead to the mat, start over, moving your hands and going back up. So forehead on the mat, hands wherever you think you'd like your back bend to be. And then inhale, face forward, crown to the ceiling, chin tucking back in. Focus on that heart center area, upper mid chest, forward and up. Coming into that upper body back bend as high as your body likes to go. So notice where the contraction is. If it's the right spot, leave it there. If it's not, hmm, yeah, okay, exhale it down. Move your hands either further away if you like it closer to your neck or closer to your shoulders if you want it into your middle back. If you get your hands under your shoulders, that will get your lower back involved. You don't need to do that. So go ahead and maximize or minimize, always your choice. You can exhale back down anytime you want to. And when you are ready, just go ahead, exhaling forehead to the mat. Take a moment to feel the circulation where that contraction was. And then hands under your shoulders, push back into a nice little forward bend child's pose to give yourself a good stretch where we've been contracting. Keep lengthening through your spine. Keep breathing. <clears throat> Again, the more you bring your knees together, the more the lower back gets into that stretch. It's your choice. You can keep your knees apart and breathe more easily if you prefer. And then bring your hands out in front toward the sides of the mat. And again, we're going to pivot up and roll all the way back down onto our bellies. So again, you can keep your forehead on the floor or turn it to the sides 
or your resting crocodile position. So we're going to do a more full cobra and with a little twist to it this time. So just a little bit of a different thing. So again, the lower body does absolutely nothing. So just sink into those sitting bone or hip bones and allow the whole hip area, pelvic area to sink feet straight back from your hips. Nothing happens in the lower body. It does absolutely nothing. Keep your forehead to the floor. Bring your hands under your shoulders, elbows in toward your side. Plant your fingers. You can come up on the fingertips, press the knuckles and the base of the hands down into the mat for support. So shoulder blades toward your waist. Inhale, face to the front, crown toward the ceiling. And then come up as high into cobra as you want. You can keep your elbows bent or you can get them stri more straight as you come up. The higher you go, the more you'll get into your lower back in the back bend. So if you don't like that, don't go there. But when you get up to whatever level you're at, and it doesn't really matter, just whatever's right for your body, push your sitting bones back and lengthen up through the crown. And we're going to twist. So exhale and turn, looking over one shoulder toward your feet. And just feel the twist in your whole upper body. So your ribs, your shoulder, everything is turning into that twist. And then exhale and turn back to the center. And lengthen your spine one more time. And exhale, pivoting back down, forehead to the mat. Take a moment there, feeling that twist energy, noticing how your body is reacting to that position. And of course, we're going to balance and twist to the opposite side. So once again, sink into the hips, into the legs, let them relax just heavy into the mat, releasing any tension. Forehead on the mat, hands more or less under your shoulders or a little bit forward from them elbows in toward your side. And again, inhaling, you want to bring the face forward, crown up first, then tuck the chin back a little bit to keep that neck stretching as much as you'd like. And again, chest forward and up. You can stay low in your cobra or you can come higher in your cobra. You can straighten your elbows totally if you love a deep cobra, but don't go into your lower back if that's not good for you, particularly since we're going to be twisting. And again, chest forward and up, sitting bones back and lengthen through the crown of your head before you twist. And then turning, looking over that opposite shoulder, coming as deeply into that twist position, as much into that cobra as you want it to be. So maximize or minimize. Remember, personal practice, do what's right for your body. Turning your whole body in the twist, not just your head. And then when you're ready to release, turn back to the front, get everything realigned, and exhale back down. As you get your forehead to the mat, go ahead and push into your hands and back into a nice little forward bend, child's pose, one more time. Take a breath. Just relax. And then inhaling, sit up on your heels, bring your legs out in front, and slide your feet to the end of the mat. So sitting bones connect, knees up, toes up, and we're gonna use the core for control to roll back onto the mat and into corpse position. So take a moment, feel your shoulder blades and shoulders, let them release, let your sacrum lower back area, relax kind of sitting bones toward your heels, maybe a little bit stretching your spine, and then just exhale and relax. So you can keep your thighs rotated in with your knees and toes up toward the ceiling or just let them release a little bit more. Hands palms up to relax your shoulders and keep that chest and upper body area, upper torso area open. And then just relax your jaw, your face, your whole upper body. Lots of work through the spine today, through the neck and shoulder area. So just kind of bring your awareness to that area. Exhale, 
let your shoulders, shoulder blades sink down deeper into that surface beneath you. And let your belly move with the breath, deep breath in and out. Exhaling any tension anywhere in your body. As your muscles begin relaxing a little bit more, just let your body grow heavy. Let it sink deep into that surface beneath you, letting Mother Earth support you. A nice earth embrace holding you up. And just let your body go, knowing that Mother Earth does support you every day. As your body relaxes, just let awareness of your body completely release from your mind. And as that happens, other thoughts will flood into your mind. Just let them flood right back out as easily as your breath. The thoughts flow in, the thoughts flow out. Just release the content of your thoughts. There's no need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts go, floating away, unnoticed, unneeded, without attention. And as your thoughts flow as easily as your breath and your body sinks deep into that earth embrace, just let your awareness find the peace within. Deepen into the peace, filling your body with peace, filling your mind with peace. And just be peace. And of course, if you'd like to keep relaxing, feel free to do so as long as you want. If it's time to release, just bring energy and awareness back to the moment, to the room, to your body, and begin moving your body as you become ready. Move your fingers and toes, your arms, your legs, whatever needs moving. Give yourself a good stretch if you want to. And when you're ready, press your sacrum low back down and draw your knees up toward, heels up toward your hips and your knees in toward your heart. Give yourself a good appreciative yoga hug, letting your body know you appreciate its work today in yoga and every day. And when you're ready to release that, release your knees, roll over to the side, use your hands for support, and sit back up, coming into a comfortable position as you just focus inward on the piece and get ready for whatever's ahead for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me this morning.